you must split humanity into two groups, and then one of those two will be randomly selected, and instantly all die how do you divide the human race? Don't split into randomly selected groups. Every single surviving person would be experiencing the deaths of half of everyone they care about. Every segment of every society would be ripped asunder. I think the best way to do it would be to have all of Asia, 60% of the world's population, in one group and the rest of the world, 40% in the other. What's left is still fully functioning societies that can expand and reclaim the rest of the planet. Edit. Having woken up to 89 or angels, many of which are calling me racist against Asians and so on, please understand the following. I don't really want half of the world's population to die, I was answering ops scenario. In my scenario, it's equally likely that I've set up Asia to carry on human civilization as to be destroyed. Asia is a geographical region that stretches from Turkey, the Levant, and the Urals through the Indian subcontinent and Siberia, all the way to Japan, Indonesia, and the Philippines. It is not a synonym for China. One group contains all of the doomsday preppers and master survivalists, and the other contains the remainder of humanity. If the first group dies, the majority of people would be able to continue life, albeit now with no survivalists, and if the second group dies, the remaining minority will be competent enough with survival to rekindle the human race over time. Necrophiliacs, everyone else. Either a lot of people will be a little happier or very few people will be a lot happier. Group 1. Me. Group 2. Everyone else. I'm either praised as a hero for volunteering for the insta-death group or I get to find out the answer to the ever present a credit question about what you'd do if you were the last person alive on earth. Group 1 is 10% of the world's women and 90% of the world's men. Group 2 is 10% of the world's men and 90% of the world's women. It would be fascinating to watch unfold either way. Edit. It's interesting to see that so many people think that the male dominated option would turn the guys into rape crazy cavemen. Remember, the human race wouldn't be anywhere near at risk. World population levels would be the same as they were in 1970, but of course with the imbalance. Group 1. Westboro Baptist Church. Group 2. Everyone else. Either the WBC is killed, and the world becomes a better place, or we're all killed, and they think everyone but them has been raptured. All of the carriers for 50% of the genetic diseases in the world in one group, and same for the other. Either way, half the population survives, and half the genetic diseases are eliminated, if you balance it right. Hyper rapid evolution in an instant. 1 million people made up of 500,000 men and 500,000 women of various jobs and backgrounds and ethnicities in one group, the rest of humanity in the other. If the 1 million people group is killed it will be sad, but we'll be fine, we survived worse during WW2. If the 1 million survive that should be enough genetic diversity for humanity to go on, and given their various jobs and backgrounds they should have the skills to survive. Edit. Okay a lot of people are asking how I expect people to find each other, and I just want to say that I forgot to mention that there will sort of be groupings large enough to be okay, and like I said I'm picking these people because they have skills to survive and help each other. I'm not picking them at random or an even amount from each country. Quite a few countries will have no survivors in order for the people picked to be close enough to some people to survive. They'll be okay. A lot of people are also asking why I picked just 1 million and that's because I'm still hoping the group of 1 million dies and we'll be fine. If not then I'm hoping for a semi-restart for humanity. A small enough population that they will struggle and have to rely on each other for survival and maybe even give Earth a break for a while. Also mainly because I was going to go with just a hundred thousand, but decided that was going too far, if they are the ones to survive but one million sounded good lol. A few years ago, the northeast had a monster snowstorm in October which almost destroyed the power infrastructure. In my area, we were without power for a week and a half. I took all the food out of the refrigerator and freezer, and put it in the snow. That's how our forefathers did it, right? It worked beautifully. I was able to get a lot of frozen meals for half price, because they had thawed. A lot of people didn't do what I did, and let the food spoil in their non-functioning refrigerators. When I asked them why they didn't store their food outside in the snow, their response was usually something like ooh, gross. 
there was nothing gross about it. It was snow, water and maybe some ammonia, but people were afraid to use it as a refrigerant. Anyway, that's how I would divide the human race those who put their food outside to preserve it, and those who let it rot inside. First split them into male and female, clump adults from both groups, who are capable of childbearing together, and then clump old people and kids together. Aim for 50 over 50 male and female and two groups one of old people who can raise the kids, and one of people who can have kids and raise them. Gives us two scenarios, where extinction is avoided. Unbiased random selection. World population reduced by 50%, result more or less the same either way, but we'd basically be okay. Society is very complicated, and requires many different types of people to operate, anything too clever risks disaster. Because I can't think of anything witty or funny let's go for first world and third world countries. You would either be left without the problem of trying to sort out the shit show that we created in Africa, etc, or the people who subsist in those countries would suddenly find themselves prosperous and take over our now empty towns, cities, and farms. People who are within 3 degrees of Kevin Bacon and the rest. If the first group goes we lose a huge number of entertainers politicians, etc, and need to rebuild society with a focus on something other than Hollywood. If the second group goes, I trust Kevin Bacon to lead humanity to a better place. At first I thought random would be the way to go, but I would want to keep families together to minimize orphans and other heartbreak. Put people into family unit groups for three generations, so kids plus parents plus grandparents is one family unit group. Family units can be expanded with up to 25 additional people, if 75% of the people in the group agree, so your so, or best friend could be added to your family, if your family is cool with that, or you can join so's family. Randomly divide the groups. Group 1. Orthodox or fervently religious people. Group 2. Moderates, run-of-the-mill semi-religious non-nutbers, atheists, agnostics, etc. If the ultra-religious people die, cool. No more jihadists, idiots stabbing people at gay pride parades, or Westboro idiots. If the moderates die the ultra-religious people will think doomsday is upon them and all those sinners were the ones that were saved. Really mind fuck em. Group 1. People who contribute to society, who try hard at what they do, in order to leave the world a better place tomorrow. Group 2. Lazy selfish greedy assholes who wouldn't help someone if it meant they had to do a bit of work or get their hands dirty. If group 2 dies, the world becomes a better place in an instant. If group 1 dies, the rest of the world can shit on each other and society can die a slow horrible death. Those who politically lean left or right. Whether you want to believe it or not, if we as a society chose one of those directions to go in, it would probably lead to a very healthy society. There are plenty of knocks against each side, and those are well deserved criticisms. However, our modern political systems has been taken over by the either slasher attitude, and it has been perverted to the point of you either vote for a, something only a small percentage of voters would agree with, or b, something everyone will universally reject. Both of the major parties do this, and the sad fact is most of the rational people I know despise this. There is a much greater concentration of people in the center than those on either side. But, we only have two choices and the nut jobs with strong, irrational opinions get the most airtime. Extremists, political religious, etc. vs everyone else. Either we are rid of these crazes or they are the only ones left, so they can duke it out and destroy the rest of the earth. This way I don't have to live in a world where people kill each other in the name of one god or another. Also would help oust many unstable gut leaders to create a more stable environment. Let knowledge ecosystem efficiency be function f, x, y, where x and y are local slash global bus factors for every significant human endeavor. Let algorithm g, f. Z, output two lists of individuals for which F is equally maximized, and Z, a measure of local family slash friend inclusion is maximized. Voila. Pretty much nothing changes for whichever group survives. It's possible your favorite rock band died, but rest assured a similar one survived. It's possible your boss is dead, but your family and friends will likely be alive. Guys who find me interesting and attractive in one group, everyone else in the other. 
Q an apocalypse scenario where I and a group of random males across the planet are suddenly the last men on earth and nobody knows why. But when they see me, their goal becomes to be a part of my apocalypse posse and gym blow jobs. Travel the world, steal cars, break stuff, play video games all day, and any guy I come across is guaranteed gay and into me, fuck yeah. Anti-vax as insane minded people. If the anti vaxxers all die then we would just continue on and thrive as a species, whereas if we die then humanity truly is doomed and the anti vaxxers die anyway. So win slash win. To absurd hypothetical ideas. Idea 1. In group I have 1% of the most genetically fit men in the world and 99% of women. In group B have 1% of the most genetically fit women in the world and 99% of men. Obviously the population in group A would grow faster than group B. Idea 2. Write an algorithm to find islands of similarity in a graph of all the personal connections between all of the people in the world. Different connections will have a greater or lesser weight depending on how strong the personal bond between those people are. Divide the graph into two groups where the sum weight of all connections crossing the border between the two groups is as low as possible. This way we can reduce the trauma faced by the remaining population that would result from one of the two groups being eliminated. Some close bonds will be severed, but the amount of bonds severed overall will be reduced. <laughs> Roughly even distribution of genetic slash cultural diversity on both sides to preserve as much of the world as is as I can, but I wouldn't split up any close families or couples in love. I'm too nice, I'm sorry. I don't care if it's a logistical nightmare, I just don't want anyone to have to lose anyone close to them. I would divide them by those who eat their macaroni and cheese with a spoon and those who eat their macaroni and cheese with a fork. Either those of us who are right can live in peace without the damned spooners, or we'll die and we don't have to put up with it anymore. Christians who believe in the rapture and everyone else. If the Christians go we can stop fighting about who's allowed to marry who or what medical procedures women can have. If the rest of us go, the Christians freak the fuck out that everyone else was raptured and they were left behind. Grouper. People who know the difference between their and their group B. People who can't be bothered to learn the difference. If group B dies, the worst part of humanity is gone. If grouper dies, then they will never have to be deal with group B anymore. Split it by nation, based on aligned social beliefs, western nations in one group and eastern in another. Regardless of which one is picked the world would be much closer to global peace than it was before. In the wake of so much population slash production collapse it would be best to make sure existing governments could cooperate to survive and rebuild. People in human relations and management in one side, people in it, maintenance, and engineering on the other, and the rest of humanity randomly split between the two parties. Let's see if those people person people can survive without the nerds they take for granted. See if the nerds like me are actually competent enough to make shit work without roadblocks. Honestly, I see disaster on the horizon either way.